Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and today I'll be showing you around this Auto Trail Tracker RB. So on the driver's side, behind the, the driver's rear door on the cab, you've got your hookup point. So these don't, these are slide, so slide the hookup point up, get your hookup lead, lift the collar and push on. And then the one hook just pull it off. But always hook the vehicle up first, then the sight as we wouldn't want you walking around with a faulty lead or if the lead does get wet, we don't want to get an electric shock. And below, you've got your grey waste water. So this is anything that's went down a plug hole. You simply drive over a grid when you're ending your holiday, coming out of a site, and you simply open the tap and this will um, basically flow into the grid or a hole in the ground or a gully should it be a smaller sale site but most motorhome sites have got a motorhome service bay where you'd stop and you'd drain your vehicle off. And here you've got storage which will open with the keys. And open, use the round headed key. Turn and then press both locks in to release the door. And then here you've got your storage behind your kitchen area. Come down the vehicle so this point as well slides up and locks with a small key. And this is your fresh water intake. So I'd suggest you go and buy yourself a hose pipe with some fittings as it's just a brass tap on most sites. You can put the hose pipe into here and then that'll fill your fresh water tank. You can see on the main control panel, the levels will go up in increments, 25, 50, 75, and 100% of fresh water. If you are traveling while camping, you will need a full tank of fresh water with you. If you are going to a site, tend to travel with a maximum of 20 liters. But should you not be able to fill the van up with water or get water to the van, the hose to the van but you can get water to the van in an aqua roll or a bucket you've got a, a 12 volt plug here which is where you'd plug your submersible wheel pump into so you pull the two prongs into there you put the hose from the pump into here and you drop the, the pump into the water and then you'd have to turn the tank fill setting on on the main control panel which i'll show you from inside and that will pump the water out of the cooling container into the main tank of the van to top your water up. Next to it you do have your, this is your external cold water feed shower. So the pump must be on and on one side of it you've got a push fit and on the other you've got a trigger gun. This is great for the bikes, the dogs, the boots, the kids if you've been on the beach. <coughs> and then underneath so you fill your fresh water up. You now want to drain it off. So blue is fresh water drain and you drain off like so. So in the winter, it's crucial that you drain your waste, your fresh and your boiler, which I'll show you when we're inside the vehicle, what we do so. Come out the back of the vehicle, you've got your high level brake light, built in reverse camera, and then behind this cover here is where your full size spare wheel lives. So you put your key in here, turn this, this will come off, there'll be a big nut, which lifts the big fiberglass panel off and then behind that will be your full size spare wheel. You've got your external gas point. So on here you've got a gas, external gas outlet and the spigot. You cut that off and that'll connect into there. You'll need some gas hosing and a Jubilee clip to connect the spigot onto the hose and then you'd connect the um, other end of the hose onto your caddock or your gas barbecue with another jubilee clip and then you can turn it on and off and this will feed your gas appliance from the main bottle on board which saves you taking another bottle. So this is your storage underneath your bed. So you can see there you've got your carpets, you've got a 240 socket there which is great if you're in good weather or you've got an awning on. 
the side of the vehicle here on and off just the sun can't be out you can put um, you can power anything up from outside and behind here is where your boiler lives so it holds 10 litres of water at any one time this tap here if you lift it up and stand it like so in the winter time or when you're not using the vehicle it'll drain the 10 litres of water out the boiler directly underneath the chassis so it'll just you'll just hear the water come dribbling out underneath the van you must drain it down in the winter as if not it's not covered under warranty unfortunately as it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle down so leave it like this and then when you do and when you winterizing as well if you open all your taps to the middle position take your shower head off and allow the hose to allow to lie down in the shower ho uh, tray and then when you do reuse it lie it down like so it now holds water fill the van up with water from the driver's side like i've just shown you Come in, put the pump on, go to the cold side of the tap first, you'll get cold water and normally instantly go to the hot. It'll cough, splutter, make all sorts of noises. And what that's doing is it's dragging the water from the main tank underneath the chassis in the boiler. Then once it hits the prime level in the boiler, it'll come through your taps and stop coughing and spluttering. And then do all the other taps and then that is your system primed. But it is very important that you leave the van in the winter completely um, water free. As if not, your, ta your tank underneath will split, your boiler will break and your pipes will split as they're just plastic. And that's not something you want because it turned turn out to be a very expensive job to repair. This is your boiler flue, so this is where all the nasties come out of the boiler. Allow this to be obstruction free at all times, so don't cover it but with anything. And then here is your um, Fetford cassette toilet. And you use your toilet, so you'd lift the handle up, make sure the blade's closed and the cassette will come out. If not, you'll just be it'll not come out. But it'll come out because the blade's closed. You've got some wheels there to drag it round. And then to empty, take the cap off. Press the button at the back, it allows air in, stops the glugging, gives it a consistent flow. Go to your waist disposal point, which is normally behind or beside the, the toilet block. Press this button, tip it out like so. And then once you've tipped it out, there's normally a tap, put some water in, give it a slush around to break up any more of the solids. Tip out again. And then, if you're using the chemical form liquid cap full, straight in here as this is a measuring stick as well and then you push it straight back into the vehicle if you're using the tablets which are the newest form of chemical in like a cellophane packet put a pint of water in here and drop one straight down the toilet and then that is the cassette ready to use as the bag will break down into the liquid coming further down you do have your LPG, which is your gas locker, liquid petroleum gas. And in here, you can get a 6 and a 13 kilogram gas bottle on board. So if you're going to use, it could be a lot on the grid. And to use, put the gas on the pigtail. You'll, it's a left hand thread. And then you tighten it up with an adjustable spanner. And turn on at the top of the bottle. So once you've turned on at the top of the bottle, if you just press this green button here, it allows the gas through the, the crash valve and into the van, and then that is you, um, your gas ready to use. When you're traveling, always make sure it's turned off, and do make sure they're strapped in with the straps provided at the back, just so that the gas doesn't roll around when you're traveling and is secure should you be in an accident. Passing the door, you've got your diesel and your add blue. So your diesel opens with the main ignition key to fill the diesel. And then the add blue is a exhaust um, additive with it being a um, Euro 6D compliant engine. So that'll come on on the dashboard and let you know when it needs it. Just top it up as soon as it comes on. Otherwise, the van may go into limp mode and if it gets too low, the van simply won't start. So just do top it up. You've got your tyre pressures which are five and a half bar all round which is equivalent to 79.5 psi front and rear. 
your tool kit lives underneath the seat so this has got everything you need to change your wheels so it's got a jack and a brace a tow and eye and a screwdriver in here and your engine battery lives underneath the floor there so that that would be the access to the battery should you ever need to replace it or get the battery out but there is a jumping point underneath the vehicle underneath the bonnet this is your bonnet release so if we go to the front of the vehicle Second catch, which is here, put your stay on. You've got your weight plate, so it's 4.4 ton. If you were to put a tow bar on and uh, tow anything with this, it can tow up to a train weight, which is the van and the trailer can't exceed 5.65 kilograms. So 5,650 5, kilograms, it can't exceed. You've got your front and back axle weights, your chassis number. Here you've got your paint code for the aluminium, um, grigio aluminium silver colour. You've got your brake fluid, your radiator fluid. This will lift off and give you access to fill your radiator fluid and your um, power steering fluid which is down here. Your screen wash lives in there so that's what you'll be using more, mainly that you will need to top up. Everything else should be done on a serve, will be done on a service. Oil level and dipsticks for checking so you, top, you, you can fill up there and check your levels before your trip you've got your earth there for your black jump lead or charger and your red lead which is your positive if you just put your key or screwdriver into here and lift this cover up and then lift it up and your red clip would go onto there and that's how you jump start the vehicle inside the vehicle this is your main 12 volt control panel here it shows that we are hooked up and on main 240 hookup. And to turn on, you've got your master switch here, which will either give you mains hookup, should you be hooked up, or if not, it will just give you 12 volt off your leisure battery. Underneath, you do have your pump, so this surfaces your interior shower, your exterior shower, your toilet, your hand basin, and your sink. You must have this on, you'll hear it pressurize until it gains enough pressure and it'll cut out and then it'll just kick back in when the tap is open you've got your interior lights which are on here the master switch and the all individually switched around the vehicle you've got your own light and you've got your light dimmers which will dim these lights here if you press and hold it'll dim these lights like so and you can set the dimmer level underneath the pump you've got your water level so this shows we've got 100% of water on board and 0% waste and go down into your battery levels underneath so your leisure battery is reading 14.2 volts your vehicle battery is reading 13.6 the active battery should always be the leisure battery and is the current coming off the active battery is 2 amp you've got your mains current which is 10.5 amp and you've got your solar current which is coming into the vehicle at 2.3 amp please note that your solar does go to sleep when you are on mains hookup because this is a bigger source of electricity and takes priority and then if you go into your settings here so you always want the active battery to be leisure don't put it on vehicle and don't put it on smart because it will change over and if it changes over during the night and it goes on the vehicle it could drain the battery but you always want the solar you can change the solar to smart so the smart will pick up what battery needs it and it will send it over to so say the vehicle battery is fully charged but the leisure's not the leisure will get the charge off the solar or it might be vice versa but if it's standing just want just put it on a vehicle as you don't want the vehicle battery to be dead and have to have a jump start I'll call the breakdown company to come and rescue you. Your tank fills here, so this would be, you'd have to turn this on here if you are filling from an aqua roll or a, a holding container with the submersible pump like I've shown you outside. Then you do have the tank heaters underneath which you can turn on if it's going to be a cold night. It stops the water from freezing in the tank. If you go on, you've got your lighting settings so you can set your dimmers. This is just your screen settings and you've got your date and time settings. And then you've got your heating and ventilation timers for your Truma. So you've got your heat override. And you can change the source here as well. 
but this is all explained in your handbook as it's new for the 2020 now operate model. your Truma digital combi heating and hot water panel so if you if press and hold it you'll give it power and you'll get a screen like this and then you enter if you just press on here you've got settings so you've got a van with the thermometer in this is the temperature of the van so you can have it all the way to off should you not want heating or all the way to 30 degrees should it be cold so for this we'll just say 21 degrees once you're happy with it just press on the wheel and that presets it moving along you've got your water so this is how hot you want your water so you're going to have it on off if there's no water in the system eco hot or boost boost prioritizes the water from the heating so we'll just say hot and then this is the energy source moving on so you've got electric on two kilowatts which you'd use if you've paid your side fees you don't want to waste your gas you've got electric on one kilowatt should you be on a small SEL site which doesn't have a lot of electricity you may have to use one kilowatt of electric you've got a mixture of gas and two kilowatts of electric which you'd use in the winter to heat the van or the water um, quicker You've got a mixture of one kilowatt and gas, or you've got gas on its own, should you be well camping and not hooked up, you'd have to use this, but for this we'll say electric on two, press. You've got your fan speed, so Eco uses a, this is a 12 volt fan, so Eco uses a little bit less of your 12 volt, and high it'll use a lot more, so if you're well camping obviously you want to, pro you want to prioritise what you're using, so you'd have to put it on Eco. Um, to save a bit of your 12 volt leisure battery Below you've got your timer which you can set but you can set your timers on here as well for the um, this heating system You've got your clock so you can this is just a clock that displays on the On the display panel there and you've got a spanner there So should your heating fail you can go all the way down to reset and hold, press and hold and reset your boiler So the light in your kitchen you've got three Gas rings, much light like so, and so you've got three gas rings, or well you've got one electric hot plate. So this is the electric hot plate to your far left. Allow it to cool before you put the lid down if you've had any of these on, and then you do have below your grill pan, which is all wrapped up there. got your grill so when you are traveling if you wrap your grill pan up in a tea towel or take it out as this can make some noise when traveling and below you've got your oven so it's your gas oven there you are there and you've got a light take your oven shelves out as well because they can be a bit rattly underneath you do have your plug for your um, electric hot plate, so should that be giving you any bother you can turn it off or unplug it. And then in the far left hand corner you've got all these gas taps here, so these isolate each gas appliance on the vehicle. These are any problems with gas, turn it off at the top of the bottle just to be safe. These are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced, a technician will test that the gas is working accordingly. And then above, you do have your microwave, which is a 240 microwave, only on hookup, and the plug is just in here. And this is, these are all your plates and cup racks in there. And then you've got your chopping board slash draining board. So when you're traveling, you want to store this away. And to store this away, if you just click here, this is where it would store. So you'd lift it up and slide it in there like so. store it away or you can have it cover the sink or the drainer board you've got your light for your kitchen here two a 240 socket and you've got two 240 sockets in there that have been added and operate your fridge if you just press and hold this button till it comes on and then it's shown there that we're we're on automatic so automatic will know what source to go on and it's known that we're hooked up so it's going to hook up 
If the hook was to be taken out, it would switch across to gas. If the engine was to be started, it would go to the battery, which is only when the engine is running. So don't think it's from your leisure battery, it's not. It's only from when your engine is running. And this is, or to manually change it, you can press and hold and wait until it all starts flashing. You can go to, so this is your temperature. Press that, you can move along to, from there, to hook up to battery or to gas if you're while camping. The idea with the battery is that you pre-chill the fridge first, so if you're lucky enough to keep this at home or you've got a storage yard that's got a hookup facility, hook the fridge up, put the fridge on, fill it with your shopping, allow it to cool overnight before you hit the road in the, the following morning. And then when you do come to drive, if it's on automatic, it'll automatically go over the battery. If not, you'll have to manually put on the battery and this'll keep the shopping nice and fresh no matter how long you travel it will stay at the same temperature it won't increase but it won't decrease inside you've got your freezer compartment and your fridge and part of your winterizing process as well if you just clean the fridge out take all your food out and um, every clear it all out clean it all out and then sometimes you can put a fridge air freshener in there and then you, the last thing you want to do is lock the door so if you just pull this blue catch out this stops the door from locking and allows air ventilation in and out the fridge to stop any mould or um, bacteria. In the bathroom, so to operate your toilet, if you press and hold here, this is your flush and this will fill your bowl up with liquid and then to deposit your waste into the cassette, if you slide the grey lever, which is your trap door, and it opens into the cassette. This must be closed to get the cassette out or it won't come out the exterior of the vehicle. And then you do have, this will go red when the hook up, when the toilet is full, sorry. Toilet re cupboard. More toilet re space, your lights. Put in here and this, the other one does your shower across the road. And now operate your skylight, so if you push this button in, pull it all the way or you can put it into the grooves to form ventilation and then you do have fly screen and blackout blind on there for on and even. In the cupboard above your driver's side bench seat is where you'll find your sergeant power supply unit. So in here these must be switched on when on 240, so what I'd do is just leave them so when they're lit up just forget about them because these will only work when you're hooked up, which will give power to your heating and hot water, so heating and hot water on 240 and your charger to split the charge between the engine battery and your leisure battery. Underneath you've got your MCBs and RCDs. So if anything trips the vehicle out, try here before you try your main sight. You've got all your 12 volt fuses which run off the leisure battery, which are all listed here. So it would be a good idea to go and buy some spare blade fuses. And you've got your system shutdown button for in the winter. So this will turn off any, this will allow, not allow any power drain. It'll isolate all the battery on the leisure side and it'll also isolate the head unit on the cab. So should you take this out for a drive in the winter and wonder why you're reversing camera or your radio's not working. If this is pressed, then there is your answer. This must be on to work your head unit in the dashboard. You've got your build number, so should you need any parts for the vehicle, if you quote this number, we'll know what part is required on what vehicle and is allocated to your vehicle. And this has been fitted with a, so this the customer has opted a max view SAT system on this vehicle, so standard, they just come with a, an aerial. This has got the SAT system and the power on, so you turn the power on to so this switch here. It'll then flash all the buttons until it starts flashing on two and once the light goes to a solid light like it is now it's found Astro 2 and to put the dish up you'd press here until it was found and that'll go solid when it's locked on to Astro 2 and to change the sat you just press sat so should you be going further afield abroad you can press this and it'll go one to five and find the sat system But to operate your telly, so you turn it on on the top here, and then you've got source. So if you press source here, it'll go from digital to satellite or the DVD, which is in the side. And then you've got to press setup here, 
and go down to the picture of the SAT system on here so on the menu you'll then see search next to transponder if you just press OK it'll do an auto search like it's doing now it'll find as many channels as it can in your area but it should automatically lock on and find the channels anyway with it being a SAT dish but you may have to do this once in a while and then there's a switch obviously this is your magic eye for switching the telly on and off but you must use a remote should the telly get stuck when once it's up like so so should you have loosened this catch off but it's still not coming down you may have to pull this just to allow it to come down any DVDs just on this side here and then you've got buttons on the top to turn it on and off should you have lost the remote or misplaced it your leisure battery is also under the rear driver's side facing seat so that's your main 20 amp fuse and if you lift this cover here you'll see your battery there so should you ever need to charge it or change well change the battery sorry you can lift it out there and if you want an additional battery fitted you'd get it fitted into this space here so it will take a little bit more of your storage but you have got good storage under here and to make the bed the first thing you want to do is if you've got the boom arm table fitted is get the boom arm table out the way so if you just unscrew this lever here you'll be able to loosen it enough so you can slide the table around on the bar and just simply lie it here and tighten it back up and it'll just sit behind the carb seats and then what you do is you'd slide them forward lift it up there is a leg here so if you slide the leg down and do the same on the other side you slide that forward lift it up slide it forward and lift pull the leg down and then use the base cushion and the backrest to fill the space in always turn them upside down as it's more of a comfortable night's sleep as you get the flat side instead of the bull nose of the cushion then you can fit a fitted sheet and do the, the, the large hecky skylight if you press these tabs and pull the, the catches away from the window and then you've got a winder here so you can wind it and put it up and put it down. This always must be closed when you're traveling. All skylights and windows on the motorhome must be closed when you are on the road. And then at the front, you've got a fire screen and a blackout blind for on any evening. In your cab, so at the right of the driver, you do have your handbrake. You've got your window adjustments, so driver and passenger, and you've got your joystick where you can choose which mirror you want to adjust, which are electric. See so if you've got the top or the blind spot. And then you've got your headlight adjustment, your rear fogs, your eco mode, and your auto stop, 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 start, even. You can turn this on or off. So as soon as you come to the traffic lights and you take the vehicle out the gear and take your foot back off the clutch and allow the clutch to stay in neutral your vehicle should stop and the engine would cut out and then as soon as you press the clutch back down it will kick back in it'll only do this if, if there is sufficient charge in the battery and then above you do have your alarm indicator so to arm the vehicle you just lock the vehicle and it will all arm but if you're going to leave a dog in or you want to arm it with yourselves in these sensors are going to pick you up and they're going to set the alarm off so to turn the ultrasonic sensors off you put the ignition on turn the ignition off within six seconds you press and hold you'll see all the red light flashing until simply it won't flash no more and that is the sensors off on here you've got your wipers and you've got your trip computer so that'll go through the screen in the middle it'll tell you your range your instant consumption your average consumption your miles per gallon your traveling times and so on you've got your hands free and this will scroll through your radio channels or your contacts mute volume cruise and speed control there with resume and cancel on there and your lights and your indicators this side six speed manual gearbox with lift the collar and up here for reverse traction control this turns it off hill descent control doesn't work on this because it's a manual these are more for automatics Hazards, locks the door including the habitation door 
and heated mirrors. You've got a USB here for charging purposes only and a 12 volt. You've got your temperature on the outside ring and the fan speed on the in. Must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work. You've got your distribution and your circulation, either recirculating air or bringing fresh air in. And then you, this does also heat and cool this top box here. So if it's on cool, you can keep little bits and pieces in for the road instead of getting up and down for the fridge like sweets. You've got a USB in there, which works the head unit. And to work your accent head unit, Turn it on by pressing here. And then if you go to home, and we've got your navigation, which will work when the card is slotted in here. Your FM tuner, which you can save what, six preset channels and you just spread, press and scan or find your channels. You've got your DAV tuner which you'll find and you can press 1 to 6 to save as well, your favourite ch channels. You've got your camera, you can click on this but this will only work when in reverse. You've got your disc should you have a disc or USB should you have a USB in here. iPod and you've got Bluetooth so you'd, try and you'd find accent on your device. So your phone, you'd press pair, you'd make sure they, um, they did pair and then it'll ask you if you want to sync your contacts, press yes. And then you are synced and as soon as someone rings it'll come up on the, the device here. And now that your sat nav's in. You'll be able to click on the navigation. And it will load. It'll ask you some settings, so what voice you wanted in, what language and so on, if you just keep pressing OK. And then once it's loaded, You'll be able to press here. And ask for a new route. And then you've got your camping sites in there. So you can put a new route and you can plan your route to your site or wherever you're going. You've also got your blinds on both side windows and on the windscreen. So you just pinch them and then they are just a magnetic strip so on a windy night you might want to put something a bit sturdy around there, elastic band or bubble to stop the blinds from picking open should the van start moving with the wind. You've got your lights here and these lights work off the leisure battery. And then you've got fade camera assist number here. The sat because this has got a satellite dish on, should you forget that you haven't put it down as soon as you start the engine the dish will start folding and um, retract into the travelling position.